Uh, this latest video, I found the topic quite interesting. Uh, it's going to be uh, um, Hammond's blood versus Jocko blood. And uh, as always, nothing intended for legal purposes. It's all history. Uh, in fact, this stuff goes back probably 40, 40 to 50 years, depending on where you start with the... Uh, <clears throat> with the bloodlines themselves and uh hammond's probably most noted for the alligator bloodline and uh, one of his top studs maybe maybe his best in his opinion i don't know for sure but certainly a great stud was uh hammond's rufus right jocko well known that blood by itself and cross with red boy has carried on for years and years uh, the alligator blood in the past was very popular all over the southwest made its way to europe uh, different parts of the north even out west here where i'm at and uh, which usually happens with uh, dogs that are great producers uh, so of course rufus was a rom and uh, i'm going to concentrate on rufus more because those were the dogs I was familiar with, most of those, you know. And he was, like I said, he was a top stud dog in his day. And I'm sure his blood carries on. Uh, heavy, heavy, uh, actually heavy uh, Carver blood with uh, the alligator uh, on top. And what made Rufus an important stud dog, in my opinion, were the crosses he was bred to. So I'm going to go through the pedigree a little bit. Rufus was sired by Plummer's Alligator. In Hammond's opinion, he was an ace dog. Uh, he was handled and owned by the Plummer's, who were a team that had a lot of the Tudor's Nig dogs, uh, and along with George Gilman, Mayfield, but he was handled and conditioned by both Mayfield and uh, Danny Burton. And maybe for his first match, maybe the Plumbers, I'm not sure. But I have a picture of, uh, of Alligator's match against a dog named Jack. And I believe Mayfield's handling him in that match. And then I also have a picture of uh, him and Danny Burton, if I'm not mistaken, Danny Burton condition to handle him for one of his matches also. Uh, but uh, Rufus was sired by, like I said, Plumber's Alligator. It's an ROM out of Williams Satin Lady. Williams had a lot of uh, Carver Dog, that kind of stuff, you know, which consisted of the, you know, the Iron Head and, and the, the Ed Crenshaw stuff, you know, Reno and, and uh, Miss Spike stuff. So Rufus the Sire is Plumber's Alley Champion Alligator. His dam is William Satin Lady, and he's actually a mother to son breeding. That's why I say he's more heavy on the Carver side, right, than the Tudor's Nig side. But Alligator was sired by Tudor's Nig out of William Satin Lady, of course. And uh, Nig is by Tudor's uh, Jeff, Champion Jeff, and Tudor's Baby, which goes back to Tudor's, uh, Tudor's Jeff was uh, Daibo and Red Lady. Jeff is part of that litter with uh, Champion Spike, Champion Buck, and Jeff. Those were the only three dogs that survived that litter, to my knowledge. All three of them made champion, and probably Spike was the best of the three. Tudor's baby is, uh, is was sired by Tudor Spike out of Carver's Black Widow, a very, very popular breeding. So you see some, some tight bred Dibo stuff here in Tudor's Nig and ultimately uh, um, Alligator on his top side. William Satin Lady was sired by Carver's Ironhead out of Carver's Black Beauty, Ironhead out of Carver's Blondie and Carver's Black Girl, and Black Beauty out of uh, uh, Ed Crenshaw's Reno and Carver's Miss Spike. So you see a lot of Carver influence there. 
the iron head blood, the Miss Spike blood. Uh, of course, Miss Spike, another top female, a two-time winner, uh, produce uh, well for Carver. You see her in Boomerang's pedigree and Arch Missy's pedigree and horse and alligators, a lot, a lot of those dogs, right? So Rufus was a inbred uh, William Satin Lady male. And like I said, a great producer. And uh, as you'll see, as I talk about this, you know, I'm gonna go to Jocko next through his pedigree. There's commonality with them. And, but there's also differences, even though Jocko has tutors, uh, Nig in his background, a lot of Mayfield blood, the Lightning and Lightning Two stuff. Uh, on his bottom side, uh, you see the commonality with Jocko's top side is you have a little bit of Tudor Dibo in there too on his bottom side, along with the uh, uh, the. Uh, Cable's Fang and Cable's Lay, William Cable, old, old time dog man. Uh, he passed away not too long ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, rest in peace to him. So, Jocko is a four time winner, uh, devastating stifle dog. His sire, Jackson's Hank, also known to be a devastating stifle dog, so that trait was passed on. A lot of people that had the Jocko blood. Uh, will attest to several of them being having that same style, rough, hard biting, stifled dogs, and like all do dogs, they, that may be their specialty. But you know, they go they go uh, to different spots too to get to that back end. Some of them go right to the back end. Some of them go to the front end first and end up in the back. Some go to the back and come to the front. This and that. Just it's just a way of, uh, their style of breaking a dog down. And they understand that that back end, uh, if it's disabled, their opponent can't do much about anything. So Jocko sired by Jackson's champion Hank. His dam was Ras Queenie. Queenie sired by Cable's Fang. Fang was a two-time winner who had a, a loss to uh, Bass's Red Boy, actually. Uh, Queenie's dam is Cable's Lady Killer. So this is a, a, a breeding that produced Queenie uh, from Fang to Lady Killer. So William Cable made that breeding, which produced Rast Queenie. And Bob Rast is the one who actually made the breeding of Jackson Hank to his Queenie female that produced Jocko. And uh, as he said in an interview, you know, he had two dogs, he bred them together, that's what he got. You know, it, 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 there wasn't in his mind a lot of science behind it. He had good dogs breeding them together, which a lot of people do. And they ended up, you know, producing a great dog in Jocko who had his own bloodline. That happens, you know. I'm not saying he didn't, he didn't have certain standards or he didn't, uh, you know, he did it unwittingly or unknowingly. It's just that happens a lot of times. You, you guys will have good dogs, they bring them together, and they produce great, and that's what happened in the case of Hank to Queenie. So it's a conglomeration of some Dybo stuff, Mayfield stuff, Tudor Nig stuff, along with the uh, Ras Queenie side has the Macross Snowball in the background, which has Dybo in it, and Snowball, of course, is in the pedigree of Grand Champion Zebo. So you see, with, with these breedings, you have a lot of rough dogs. You know, and of course, Daibo changed the game, and Daibo became a prolific uh, stud dog, and bloodlines, and this, and they went every which way, and you see it all over the country, all over the world. So some of the dogs that, that uh, uh, Rufus produced. And he had a litter mate named uh, Plumber's 500. I remember that dog. I don't know too much about him, what he produced, but I know he did have that one litter mate. Uh, but some of his offspring, some of Rufus's offspring were uh, Mr. Bulldog and King Limey's champion Spike, who was out of Royce's black sister. 
Mr. Bulldog and Keen Limey, those, those people are from across the pond. They're, they're in Europe, so that's how that blood went that way. And when I, I visited Amsterdam to judge a confirmation show many years ago, I saw some of the progeny descendants of those dogs, man. They're beautiful dogs, and those guys over there, they take real good care of their dogs. And they have a look about them and a way about them. They're very serious dogs, a lot of them, you know, and uh, have that confidence know just just by their stature and their focus you know they're they're those type of dogs very serious type of dogs uh hammond's andy l hammond snort or pig they call them two-time winner uh hammond's beetle was a two-time winner or a champion i'm not sure which uh hammond's kilroy another two-time winner uh hammond's champion michelle these are all offspring of rufus hammond's pretty two-time winner rogers Roaster was a two-time winner. Anderson's champion, Brutus. Uh, he was either, you know, he's officially a three-time winner. Some people say he was a multiple winner, eight-time winner. Uh, he's out of Woods, Luzell. And Hayward's champion, Jack, J.J. Hayward, another uh, famous, you know, or popular dog man from the past. Had a lot of dogs, a lot of good ones, several champions. Uh, ch his champion, Jack, was a three-time winner, one-time loser. And then the, these last two dogs I'm going to name, uh, Alvarado's champion Goose and again Ronnie Anderson's champion Smiley along with uh, Anderson's champion Brutus. Those dogs were from the Oklahoma area. Uh, you know, a lot of that uh, Dybul stuff stayed in the Oklahoma area. And in my opinion, like I said, the best way to that I've seen the Rufus stuff or the Hammond stuff whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's, I forgot the dog's name. There's another one from Hammonds. He was a 14 time winner, I think. Uh, somebody will put it in the comments. He, name escapes me. Real popular dog. Uh, I believe he lost one match, but reportedly a 14 time winner. He was another Hammonds bred dog. Uh, but in my opinion, the best way to cross it is with the Bully Sun Blood slash maybe Eli stuff, you know. Those are the ones I was familiar with that I saw. Scratch and Stitch had a lot of that blood. Uh, of course, uh, 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 the Curry Brothers had some of that, you know, uh, Tudor's Nig cross stuff or tight bread stuff, you know. Uh, of course, Ronnie Anderson did, and uh, even even uh, other people, uh, Fat Albert and, and uh, Joe Alvarado, you know, had that Hammond stuff across, but but uh, that's the way I like I like to see it. And uh, I saw Champion Brutus in around 1983. He went to a show in Louisiana, and uh, in my opinion, he was in perfect condition. Just a beautiful animal, black or black brindle. You know, just put up real nice. I, I believe uh, Michael Boot is the one who conditioned him under, of course, uh, Anderson, Ronnie Anderson's guidance. And as you know, I mentioned before, and we talked about it in Gene Matson's uh, interview. Uh, Matson conditioned a lot of Anderson's dog. He conditioned uh, Tonka and Champion Spade and Champion Red Baron and his own Fred T dog and just a bunch of them, Cleo and all that. So Anderson was in good company. We made friends. Uh, after that visit, you know, he actually came out to my house for a, a show we had near my area. And uh, uh, the reason he came out is because we had bred uh, Bill, who went on to be a champion. We bred Bill to uh, Robin's, uh, one of Robin's dogs. Uh, in fact, I had beat Robin's Rusty Spike, so we bred bill to rusty spikes dam and his dam happened to be a, a red baron tonka fred t kind of breeding so that's why ronnie was interested in and that's why he came out uh, to see those dogs came out to visit we kept contact uh through the years you know uh he passed away also rest in peace ronnie but he had a lot of good dogs but <coughs> that brutus was a was that <coughs> Rufus kind of bully son breeding and that breeding was uh, 
similar to King Limey's champion Spike. Uh, Spike was by Royce's black sis, sis, sister, another bully son bred bitch. Those dogs were rough. Uh, but not only rough, they were smart too. They weren't dumb. Uh, I guess one of the best examples uh, out here this way from the southwest area was, uh, what was the dog's name? Uh, anyways, I'll, I'll tell my story first. Uh, one of the best I went into, and it was Champion Clorox, who was that, uh, that Rufus kind of bully son cross, you know. Uh, he's bred by Scratch and Stitch Kennels. They had Red Man also, Champion Reggie, had that same Hammonds cross in there. Clorox was a good dog, at least that day he was. He was right on point, man. and uh, he was smart. He would fight the muzzle, bottom jaw, go rough to the shoulders, you know. Mr. Rowdy uh, uh, took out one leg, and they were going back and forth. Man. And, you know, I've, I've talked about that match uh, in other uh, uh, videos and all that. It's in, it's in my books also. But just an excellent dog. His sire, Beast, that's who he was. Sire Beast was a champion, four-time winner. He beat uh, Steve Champion Bullshit in almost two hours. Of course, Bullshit, top dog. Uh, Beast, the sire of Clorox, uh, also a top dog, you know. So those are kind of the, kind of the uh, uh, breedings that I was familiar with. And even Victor Cruz, BC Kennels, had some of that stuff. A lot of people had it. The straight Hammonds dogs, I would say, uh, and I saw a few of them out here. One of them lost uh, to John's Sir dog. Sir was conditioned and handled by Cat and Company. He was an excellent dog, kind of that white blood mix stuff. You know, he was all white, two-time winner, beat two good dogs. He beat... Uh, Hammond's bred dog in an hour at 48 pounds then he won a second match over two-time winner in uh, uh, hour 25 I believe or hour 35 something like that uh, sir beat a two-time winner at 45 and a half pounds for a second one uh, but that uh, and then uh, another dog named sumo who was a Eli bred dog went into a Hammond's bred dog from PB, and, and uh, that one went two hours and 20 minutes. In the case of those two Hammond's dogs losing, I don't remember them quitting. I know I know the dog Sumo beat didn't quit. They picked him up at two hours and 20 minutes. That was a slam-bang affair. And for me, the straight Hammond stuff, it's rugged, durable, kind of slow, rough, strong, you know, not really the speedy type or the intelligent type. But when you start using them crosses, like a lot of bloodlines, you know, it increases their intelligence, you know. Because Clorox was no dummy, he was smart. And the other ones, like Pig and Snort, Pig and Snort are the same dog. Those, uh, or even uh, Shank Bones, Lion Head, you know, they're rough, but they're smart, you know. Uh, grand Champion Lion Head, anyways, you know. So those are kind of the uh, my favorites, and those are the ones I was familiar with. When it's the more straight bred dog, you know, like a lot of bloodlines, they have certain traits about them, like the Jeep dogs or the Red Boy dogs, this and that. But when you cross them, that's where you get a lot more ability and intelligence and different traits that are added because of the cross, the hybrid vigor. Uh, but the uh, straight Hammond stuff, they're, they're tough and durable. On that trip in 83 to go see Brutus, uh, we stopped at Gary Hammond's place, a great host. He, set us up at a very nice barbecue place and he had about 80 or 90 dogs there got to see uh, a little Selma dog she's like a 30 pound dog she won in like three hours or something I don't remember if Teddy was there Teddy was another like three hour winner they were little tiny dogs uh, but he had a lot of those uh, uh, a lot of his Rufus dogs or Tudor's Nig dogs, if you want to call them, you know, a lot of them black, black brindle, a lot of brindles, you know, buckskin here and there, uh, but just rough, solid-looking dogs, and very, again, very serious dogs, 
uh, same like the ones that went to Europe, very serious dog. So Jensen's champion Spike and uh, Anderson's champion uh, Brutus, similar type breedings, they exhibit, exhibited similar traits, you know. And once again, those are my favorite quote unquote Hammond's dog. Uh, with Jocko, of course, we have a, a four-time winner. Uh, his litter mates were Chavis's Apple, champion Apple, three-time winner, one-time loser, and Rass, champion Argo. He was a four-time winner, one-time loser. I believe Apple, it was either Apple or her daughter, lost to the very famous uh, Molly B dog, eight-time winner. And then Ras champion Argo, he lost to he, he lost to uh, Thris champion Bumper. Bumper was a son of Grand Champion Art, and uh, uh, that was another famous matchup at the time. Uh, this blood is in you know it's from the uh, Carolina area, so you know uh, Jocko, Argo, and Apple, all of them were bred, all of them good producers. I would say Jocko is the best producer of them all because he's got his own bloodline named after him with good reason. You know, uh, most famous crosses with the Red Boy stuff, but there's dogs like uh, Jackson's champion Cold Cat, who was a half-brother to Jocko. He's off of uh, Jackson's Hank. That's Vernon Jackson. He owned Hank and he owned uh, champion Cold Cat. Uh, Cold Cat was out of Hank and Young's Tina. So uh, jo the Jocko stuff or that blood, you know, Hank, whatever you want to call it, uh, Jackson's Hank stuff, uh, it was crossed, of course, with the Red Boy stuff, and it went more to the Jocko side, like you see in Champion Termite and uh, Havana Boy's Grand Champion Rodney, dogs like that, more heavier on the Jocko side without being the Red Boy stuff. A lot of it is, you know, the straight cross Red Boy uh, uh, Jocko, and then some people went heavier on the uh, on the Red Boy side. You can go either way, you know. I think with the, and I think the reason the cross was made, like a lot of crosses, is you want to put two factors together that that complement each other. So you have the Red Boy known for gameness and durability, roughness. You have the uh, the Jocko stuff known for, you know, hard mouth, rough, and intense, you know, put them together. And you got dogs like uh, Yellow John, you know, Champion Yellow John, and, or I'm sorry, uh, you have dogs like uh, uh, Champion John Boy, you know, Rodney's JR, and those type of dogs. Uh, some of the offspring, again, I'm going to just go down a quick list of, uh, of Jocko were uh, Can't Miss Jocko, two-time winner, ROM, Green Sandy. And Green, sometimes he doesn't get a lot of credit. I was familiar just with the name, and I followed him back in the day. He was a, a, a you know, a good breeder, competitor from that same area, the Carolinas, you know. And you'll see Green Sandy, ROM, uh, different dogs from him, you know, some of these guys don't get credit. In the area, they're well known, and someone like me who's a historian and followed everybody, I'm familiar with the name, and I remember uh, his shows and his dogs, but, you know, uh, he deserves a lot of credit uh, for, for keeping that blood going, you know, and making his own family and dogs out of it also. Tans Gladys was a P.O.R. Uh, Shabbos Dangerous Dan was a two-time winner. Fletcher Chavis actually owned Jocko, and he's the one who made uh, that bloodline and those dogs, so he gets credit for that stuff, you know. Very famous dog man, again, from the Carolinas. Uh, if you never heard of Fletcher Chavis or Chavi or however you want to say it, uh, then you need to do a little bit more research because he was prominent in a lot of those breeds, and he had a lot of those dogs. And then next generation, you have David Kent doing the same thing, using... Red Boy Jocko stuff and and uh, producing a lot of good dogs, you know, heavy competitor. Uh, 
Chavis is Bucky, two-time winner. He was either a two-time winner or a three-time winner, or two-time winner, one-time loser. I forget. But another famous dog from that. Chavis is Margaret was a two-time winner. Chavis is Gypsy was a one-time winner, one-time loser. Chavis is Queenie. Uh, you look up all these dogs' names, you'll see them. All these that I mentioned, you'll see them in different pedigrees here and there because people utilize them not just for competition but in their breeding program. Same with the Rufus dogs, you know. Uh, uh, it was done with a lot of the jocko dogs, a lot of the offspring and uh, progeny from those dogs. They're all over the place. Uh, Chavis is queen again. Jackson's champion hubcap. Again, you see Vernon Jackson with the uh, son of uh, Jocko, champion hubcap. And then you have Carolina Kennels, Golden Grove. Carolina Kennels, another kennel, of course, from that area that... that uh, you know, utilize, utilize that blood, you know, if you want to check all the old magazines, you'll see all these people in there, and uh, again, you have kind of a, a similarity, uh, which you do in a lot of dogs, but on, on the face value, if you look at the first two, three generations, you may not recognize the dogs, you may not know that there is some commonality behind them, and that's true with the uh, Jocko and Rufus, or Jocko and the Hammonds dogs uh, in particular, and they're from different parts of the country. You know, uh, the Hammonds blood from the Southwest, the uh, Jocko stuff from the East Coast and the Carolinas, but there's commonality if you go back far enough, and you'll see that in a lot of dogs. But the one thing that's common, or two things that's common with those two dogs, is they have the Mayfield blood in them, and they have the Dybo blood in them. And they just went in different directions and they have different crosses in them. You even see some old family red nose back there. and you know. So I implore people to look at those pedigrees, especially if it's someone who has uh, dogs down from that stuff, whether it's uh, down from Fletcher Chavis's stuff, down from Vernon Jackson's stuff, down from David Tant's stuff, down from the Carolina Kennel stuff, uh, you know, or Chavis, all, you know, all these guys, I'm repetitive, but, you know, they're, they're all in there, you know, and, uh, same with the Southwest, if you have any stuff down from, from Hammonds himself, or, or, uh, uh, Ronnie Anderson stuff, you know, on that side, because Anderson's probably most noted for having the Tonka blood, which he did a lot of it, you know, again, there's commonality with that, and the Daibo stuff, but he also had Champion Spade, and Brutus, and, uh, you know, took more after the, the Rufus side, the Hammond side, if you put it. You know, there's even some dogs with the, have Hammond's Teddy and Selma and, and uh, you know, even that little Ronnie dog I got from from Boyles. You know, he was like three-quarters Bolillo mostly uh, with a little bit of Hammond stuff in him down from Selma, those dogs, you know. So it's it works with a lot of stuff, both of them do uh and both of them uh popular bloodlines but uh you know if you do your studying and you check this these bloodlines out you'll see the commonality if you go back far enough and you see the same patterns and combinations just different names different dogs even might have different style you know the jocko dogs are known for having more speed and and like i said uh hard bite and stuff to <coughs> ham stuff known for for being more rough and durable you know thick skin very thick skin rugged <coughs> like that and uh but again cross them up man you get some intelligence dogs that have a lot of ability all around players that can do <coughs> a lot of everything you know and that's what a good breeder does when they're developing their family of dogs, you know, at least in my opinion, you want to kind of develop kind of an all-around athlete as far as athleticism goes. Dogs that have good air and good balance and ability and wrestling ability and hard mouth and work ethic and intelligence and, you know, there's different ways to go about it. But you have to set a foundation first. What's your foundation? And from that, you build off of that, right? Uh, because, you know, 
a lot of tight bred dogs uh, or foundation dogs or brood stock, whatever you want to call it, uh, they have, uh, if they're tight bred, if they're heavily line bred, tight line bred or inbred, they have limitations to them. They make good foundation stock in that respect, but they're lacking something. So that's why you make crosses, whether it's a 50-50 cross, a 75-25, a 66-33, whatever it is, you're trying to develop, trying to retain those basic foundational traits you have, but improve on the athleticism and ability. With uh, dogs that are already crossed, like Art or uh, you know Dirty Mary or whatever, they themselves are the catalyst for performance. They have performance, so they're throwing it. They can be foundation dogs too. Foundation dog doesn't have to be an inbred or a heavily line bred dog, right? Because they're they're producing, exhibiting certain traits of a high caliber, uh, even a dog like Bodillo, right? And they themselves as an individual are able to produce those traits in whatever manner. So you can look at it both ways. You can take tight bred dogs, improve on them, or you can take dogs that are not tight bred, have a lot of ability, and continue those traits forward. So there's multiple ways to go about breeding. And uh, it's just, you know, what are you trying to do? Which traits are you trying to retain? But the Hammond's blood, the Jocko blood, definitely known for certain things. And uh, both were bred tight, both were crossed, and produced well. So I thought it was a very interesting uh, this versus that or combination or topic. So I uh, hope you guys like it. And uh, again, you need any merch, get a hold of me. You know where. Thank you very much.